All right, so where we left off, we had just said that we were going to have an XP cost for our skills. And we had our uh, screen here that changed um, some simple buttons in here, and it changed the colors based on whether or not the skill had been purchased or not, and we could click on an item and purchase the skill. And this included the, um, the native uh, gamepad navigation. And we needed to wire up our XP so that we were actually spending experience points to get skills, and we were actually gaining experience points from battles. And then after that, um, well, we'll see what's next. I think probably um, implementing the prerequisites. So I know we have um, we have attack one, two, and three here, and you need attack one to buy attack two, and attack two to buy attack three. And we also have bash and stun bash, which stun bash is an upgrade for bash. So we need to make sure we're restricting the purchasable skills based on both having the amount of XP to purchase and also meeting the prerequisite skills. So first up, let's go ahead and add our experience points. So I had this add XP method that was previously doing nothing, but now we're just simply incrementing this property I added and making sure we're not going below zero if XP is a negative number. And I believe that in stationary battle, we were originally um, calling this add XP, even though at the time it wasn't doing anything. Let's see, player rewards, I believe is the name of the method. Yeah, and this guy just loops over all the items in the enemy's inventory. And as far as um, droppable items goes, it looks at, well, first off, it adds the XP for each enemy that was killed in the fight. And then it, um, it goes over all the items that the enemy had, and depending on the drop rate that's been applied, uh, that the item has, we run a little, quick little unity.random range and see if our random range value from zero to one is greater than or equal to drop rate. In that case, if we have a, a 0.6 drop rate of 60%, then we have, if this value zero to one is 0.6 or below, then we get the item. And did I do that correctly? Yeah, yeah, I did that correctly. Let's second guess myself for a moment. And yeah, so we do call player instance dot add XP here, and we also write this log, which this logs dot insert is a list of strings that gets popped up in the in the menu, which I will show you right now. So you might have noticed this before in a couple of our earlier parts. When the battle finishes, there is a there is a rolling log of text around in this region that shows all the all the um, the items and experience gained from the battle. So once I kill this guy, see the battle end, and you'll see the little text pop up over here. It might have been a little quickly. It also is pretty um, pretty bright. Okay, I need to work on that uh, spawn location range for activation. That was a little janky. But yeah, so it might be a little hard to see, but there was that plus 13 experience and then one material, which is just an unnamed test item. You'll see with the more enemies you kill, you get more experience. Uh, that time I still only got one drop, but the chances of getting some of the other item drops is, you know, higher with more enemies in the in the fight. So that experience should have added up. What I need is I need a spot to show that. So we're going to show the experience here on this screen with a little text block here. So let me grab my prefab. I really wish Unity had a, um, 
I mean, I guess it has a save search. Search by label. I mean, I guess if I really wanted to, I could label some of these things and do that. I don't know. I don't know quite how that works. Can I add custom labels? Yeah. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing's a little strange. I really wish I could um, just flag certain ones as commonly used and just get a list of those rather than having to come through here and find this stuff every time. And actually, while I'm looking at it, let me take a peek here. So, import blah blah blah, and we got this layer, tag layer. I believe labels is when you click this thing. Or not. No, that's just the colors. That's just the iconography for this. Yeah. That's just our static information, layout properties if it's in an asset bundle or not. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that because now I'm a little curious if I can use the labels to kind of build my own favorites menu. But in any case, I want to drop my text white, which is my, my typical um, font style. And I'm going to go ahead and just put this here in the bottom left. There we go. So, yeah, bottom left position is half of the width. Position Y is yeah. There we go. That white outline was throwing me off. Yeah, see, I'm not quite on the edge. I mean, technically I am, but... Oh, well. In any case, 60-20. And we're going to go ahead and bump him up another 30. I think I was giving 30 margin to each thing. Yeah, that lines up perfectly with the, the left side of that button. And another 30Y, so 50. Stretch this guy out a little bit further. Yeah, I'll give him about a 250. And I'm just going to say XP and... Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So more than enough digits worth of space. Uh, left aligned our text, center aligned on the on the thingy thing, on the vertical. Uh, let's kick our size up to like 26 or so. Add my text here. There we go. Associate this up. Go ahead and on start and actually. That was kind of a problem last time. I did this on start and not on enable.
So I'm not really worried about the experience amount changing while I'm on, well, I guess it will change on this screen because I'm going to have to detract the experience from here. So let me give this a, its own method. And where am I calling add XP? Down here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. Now, let's go ahead and do some finagling. So I got my player. And I'm going to leave this equipped skills alone for the moment, even though that's in the test here because I don't have a screen to equip skills with yet. But I'm going to take out all of my unlocked skills, but I'm going to go ahead and just add XP. Um, let's add 2,500. And I need to go to my skill repository. And I need to give these guys some costs. So attack one. Let's go ahead and give that a 200. 500. Thousand bash five hundred uh, eight hundred and dash. Let's go ahead and give this guy two fifty. You know, it's just some arbitrary values here. I can buy some, but not all. Uh, yeah, fifteen twenty three hundred. Yeah, I can't buy them all. But I do have enough here that I've got prerequisites that increase in value. And I should be able to buy some to start with. So let's go ahead and start here. Let's go ahead and pop our screen with the select button. That was weird. Did I throw any errors? I didn't throw any errors. I'm gonna try that again. I felt like I had to press select uh, once or twice. I did. That was very strange. I'm not throwing any exceptions or anything. Is it because I moved that stuff to on enable? On enable and update XP text. I shouldn't have really heard anything. Apply styles. I guess that this is firing before unlocked skills is available. But all the same, like like I said, it's not like I'm um I don't know. For brevity's sake, we'll just go ahead and see if that is the issue. I don't need to think about it too hard, just try it. No? That's not the problem. I mean, once again, unless I'm seriously just sitting here not seeing what's up. Yeah. All right, let's take a closer look at the inspector. So player menu canvas is off. So is that the problem? Did it not? No, oh, it's it's enabled. It's registering the screen and then disabling. Um, let me just turn that off real quick because that's going to be the real scenario here. I press select. My game is paused. My screen is here. But this guy didn't get set to active. Why? Player menu, canvas, player menu, screen navigation. When I start, I do a hide all. When I do an on enable, I show the unlock skills. Is that the deal? So I do the start. 
He should hide all, even though he's on enabled. Yeah, he'll on enable and show all skills. And then he's going to start, check these guys, do a hide all. My player menu controller is going to do this show screen, player menu. And then it should be on enable, which will show unlock skills. Well, what the hell? This is working perfectly just my last session. That's disappointing. Don't you hate it when things just stop working while you have the application closed? Hmm. The normal on enable and false to turn it off. Now, when I press select, so I'm hitting hide all again. Why am I hitting? Navigation control on enable is saying show true. Uh, the start is disabling the main control. So we're hitting false because that calls hide all. It's calling hide before we're hitting this start. Which, you know what, that's fine, that's fair, because in that case I just don't need to call hide on this uh, start method. Yeah, there we go, first try. So, now I got my skills here. I'm gonna buy bash, and we're gonna see our experience drop by, two, by 500. Drop by 800, drop by 250, drop by that, drop by 500, and then I can't afford attack 3. Very cool. Now, was I mistaken, or the XP, yeah, the XP wasn't set there, because I was fiddling around with this other thing. Let me go back to this. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Next piece there. All right, cool. Now then, so we got experience. We're buying the, ex the skills with our experience. Now we just need to check our prerequisites. So available skill clicked. We need to see here. So right now we're uh, getting our game object. And there's another thing, we need a message of some sort. I 
Oh no, I guess I don't need a message because the, um, I was just thinking about showing a message across the bottom, something that says like skill purchased or you could not afford the skill or something like that. But quite frankly, when the skill changes color, you know you bought it. And I'm going to have a, another step after this where if you can't afford the skill, it needs to be some different like color, like a darker color or something like that. But I'm not going to worry about that up front. Like I'm, I'm still not 100% sure on what the skills are actually going to look like. And I'm probably going to have some icons or something for that. So I'll worry about that then. Well, no, no, you know what? I'll, I'll take care of that now. I mean, the logic's the same. So first off, what was I going to do next? The prerequisites. So available skill clicked. Well, I guess first off then, I mean, here's the trick, apply style knows if it's available or not, right? And that's, that currently is only against this player. If we already own the skill, it's available or not available. do a little uh, overloaded method here. So if we already own the skill, and, or if the player's current XP is less than the cost of the skill, then we can't buy the skill. And third, if skill.parents is not equal to null, and skill.parents.length is greater than zero, then if... Then And for each string in that set, if not player instance unlocked skills contains that prerequisite, then return false. So do we already own the skill? Do we have enough XP to buy the skill? Have we already purchased all of the prerequisites?
if we can purchase the skill. Now here's the difference. We need another style. That name sucks, but whatever. Now, what I call that style type. First off, if we can purchase the skill, then the skill type is going to be available, or style type rather. And if we can't purchase the item, here's the trick, right? So I don't even know if I can purchase the skill or not. Rather than calling this style type, skill purchase state feels a little bit better. So the skill purchase state will either be available, purchased, or unavailable, depending on a few choice criteria. And I want to return that from these. So instead of being booleans, so if the skill is not equal to null, then there was no definition for the skill. So unavailable is kind of my default, right? So if the skill is null, unavailable, if we already own the skill, then the result is purchased. If our XP is not good and unavailable, and if we don't have all the parents unavailable, otherwise it is available. And in this case, this dot apply style child dot game object can purchase skill. That goes away. And actually, I'm renaming this to 
get purchase state. All right, so that feels a little bit better. Now, if I'm getting these states, I'm going to apply these styles. I have a third style here now, right? Else if style is equal to unavailable. Now, this is all very similar, right? Dot unavailable skill view info. And we're just copying over the button color states. And we're going to add a listener for uh, purchased unavailable. We'll add another method for this just, uh, just to be consistent. Unavailable skill clicked. And that should be all hunkadori. Oh yeah, because I don't have that yet. Kind of need to set my guy here. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate this. Unavailable skill node. And I'm going to go ahead and set the colors to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go grayish. go gray across the board except for highlight we're gonna go for a lighter gray we're gonna go ahead and give him that button so there we go so I got my stun bash is gray I fired the unavailable skill clicked, as you can see in the console. Now, here's the trick. I bought attack one, I can't buy attack two. So when I buy a skill, I need to do what? I guess I need to reevaluate. Yeah, I guess the safest thing to do is just to reevaluate all of the styles. But really, I only care about ones whose um, prerequisite is the skill I just bought. So I'm going to apply this style to this current object. And I need to do a, so I'm, and then I'm updating the XP text. This dot. So let's say I'm evaluating my prerequisites. So I've got my skill attack one. I could go through, I mean, ultimately I need to go through all of the buttons and check to see if, and do the whole rigmarole. So really essentially, I just need to call apply styles again. I don't even need to bother. because so I need to check all the prerequisites and everything too. So, 
it's almost the same exact performance whether I provide it with the prerequisite that changed or not. I still need to search through all the children to see and get the skill definitions for every child to see if that child contained that same prerequisite, and if it did, I need to switch its status. Whereas I could just go back through, run the evaluation, and change the status for all the buttons, which, I mean, ultimately we're probably talking a total of 50 skills, or 60 skills at the most. We're not really, we're not exactly talking about, you know, records in the millions or anything like that. So I'm going to buy attack one, and now attack two is available. Buy dash, nothing changed. Attack three, I can't buy. I can buy attack two, and I can buy attack three, and I can buy bash. And stun bash stayed unavailable because while the prerequisite was matched, I don't have the experience points to buy it. Yep. Frickin' beautiful. All right, so got my experience wired up, got my prerequisites going, got my style set. That seems like a very good little bit of uh, execution. All right, so thank you for watching this episode. Hopefully you gained something from it. And otherwise, you know, hopefully you enjoyed my insane ramblings and talking to myself into the microphone. Uh, have a great evening and, you know, uh, keep it real.